Oh man. Say it on say it ain't so, Loma. Say it ain't so. Before we get into that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the videos. So Lomachenko's come out and I guess the excuses start for why he lost. Um this is the funny thing about the whole situation to me. Before Lomachenko, you know, had this fight against Teofimo Lopez, um, Lomachenko consistently talked about how all his other fights, the reasons why he had certain issues in the other fights is because he was hurt in those fights. You know, he says he's been pretty much hurt for most of the fights that he's had. Um, he said this is the first fight that he's going to go into the fight 100% healthy. You know, and because of that, he expects himself to dominate the fight. You know, then now the story has changed that, you know, he's had issues with his shoulder uh, prior to the fight. It's, and that he had a shot, you know, in the shoulder because of that. And that, I guess, during the fight, um, he re-injured it. First, he said something like the second round. Then it was like, he doesn't know what rounds, round between like four and seven whatever it is and that quote that's why quote lost the fight but then at the same time they always talk they're also talking about how that they were robbed and they really won the fight and that the judges you know robbed him of a victory and he really they won the fight because he dominated the second half of the fight so it kind of then you get confused because if you believe you won the fight there's no reason to even bring up everything else as far as with the shoulder and the injury you believe you won the fight, doesn't matter. You won the fight. So, whatever quote entry that you had wouldn't have mattered anyway. But when you look at the fight, you know, the first half of the fight, he didn't even use his, his upper body anyway. He was more focused on not getting hit. He didn't want to get hit to the face. He didn't want to get hit while Teofimo was still fresh because he saw what happened in the previous fight against Kome. You know, Kome got caught early, you know trying to basically fight, throw hands, and got put down. They wanted to avoid that, you know. But Teo's having a lot of success going to the body. And whenever the damn thing was open, going up top, you know. But Loma did a great job holding his hands up the whole time. And just like with any kind of situation, if a fighter's hurt, you look to see are they doing anything in the corner. Are they asking him any questions about the injury? Nothing like that was going on. A lot of times they'll be sitting there rubbing on the shoulder, you know what I mean? Like when Floyd Mayweather got hurt, um, came into the fight against um, Castillo in their first fight, you saw him rubbing it. Rubbing, rubbing the shoulder for every every single round and asking him about it, rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it down. There was no treatment being done on them. And then the second half of the fight, he had no issue when he finally decided to throw hands on the seventh, eighth round. Seventh, eighth round, he was throwing hands. There was no no twitching, no nothing. He was throwing away with abandonment. With no issues. So it's kind of like, okay. Couldn't have hurt that bad, you know. You want to see somebody get hurt real bad when it comes to a shoulder? Go look at Andre Verdo versus Carras. That's somebody with a hurt shoulder. <laughs> That's somebody with a hurt shoulder. You want to, you know, see somebody with a hurt, you know, with a, with a, with a hurt hand? Go see May, uh uh, Wilder versus Arroyo when he broke his hand when he had to switch and he was just jabbing, 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 jabbing the whole night and stopped the man with a jab couldn't use the other hand all he could do was just jab, 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 jab jab the whole night you could clearly tell there was something wrong with him you know and if you're as good as you say you are even if you have an injury you should still be able to succeed anyway it shouldn't matter most people go into bouts hurt. Somebody like Dante Wilder, who supposedly has no skills, and all he has is that one hand. When he fought Arroyo, he jabbed him to death. When he fought against uh, Washington, he came into that fight with third degree burns and a broke arm. In an injured arm, where he had to have surgery after the fight. In the first Ortiz fight, he went in there, weighed in at 200 and, what was it, seven pounds? Because he had lost so much, so much weight from being sick from having the flu. He still went and did what he had to do. He was also sick for the first Anthony Westico Tyson Fury fight as well. He still got it done. 
can't count how many times this man has had to have surgery in his hands because he's broke his hands or his biceps or his arm. You look at someone like a Floyd Mayweather against Costillo. He had an injured shoulder, just like supposedly Lomachenko did. He was able to handle his business to win that fight. When he fought against Manny Pacquiao, his hands were messed up. So the last two weeks, he had no sparring, no training, nothing. All he did for the last two weeks of training was just jog. Nothing else but just jogging. Didn't spar nothing because he wanted to make sure his hands were as good as they could possibly be come fight night. Got the job done. You know? And can't... There was a portion of his career where literally every single fight he was breaking his hands. That was part of why he was taking such long breaks. He kept on breaking his hands. Once he broke his hand, he was in so much pain he took a knee so he could get those 10 seconds. You know what I mean? To let that pain go away. Then he got up and jabbed the dude and beat him with a jab the whole night. Andre Ward, another person who consistently fights injured. He's always, he's, he's always hurt. Always hurt. You know, all his big fights, he's been hurt. In all his major fights, he's been hurt. Carl Frotch, he was hurt in that fight. Before the fight, in training camp, he was hurt. You know, to one point, he, he said he hit Frotch one time. You know, because Froch was getting hurt, getting hurt, getting hurt. Like he was, it looked like he might have been able to stop Froch if he kept pushing the issue. But he said he hit Froch one time. All of a sudden, just the pain just went from his arm, just shot all the way down to his toes. When he fought, you know, against Kovlev, he was hurt in that fight. But he still did what was necessary for him to come out victorious. That's what champions do. That's what the greats do. They figure it out and they get it done. Especially you find a 23-year-old. You find this young kid. He's a young kid. <laughs> you know, he's a young kid. With only 19, what, 19 fights? They said Floyd Mayweather was fighting somebody that was green when he was fighting Canelo, who was 20 pounds bigger than him on fight night. And he was 36, 37 years old. And Canelo Alvarez was in his early 20s. You're 32 years old. Fighting a super fresh dude. Canelo had like 40 some fights, almost 50 fights when he fought Floyd. The grace just get it done. It doesn't matter if you were hurt or not. So even if you quote had that injury, we clearly saw in that fight that you were able to still perform. You were still able to, still able to use that arm. You weren't in the Andre Berto situation. So even if you were hurt, it doesn't matter. The greats figure out ways to still win. They're still able to make adjustments. That's why they're called their greats. That's why they're pound for pound. Because they're able to do that. So if you're supposedly in that category that you've bestowed yourself in and your team has bestowed yourself in and your management has bestowed yourself in as ESPN and Ring Magazine and everybody has bestowed you to be, you should be able to handle that situation especially against a 22, what, a 22, 23-year-old? Floyd Mayweather at 135 pounds, who at 32 years old, whatever, would have beat the brakes off of Teofimo Lopez, injury or not. It would not have been close. It would have been a one-sided tail whipping. That's what it would have been. That's what the greats can do. You know? You just got in there with someone that was more skilled than you. Someone that had the right movement. Somebody that even though you had the high guard, he was coming to you at the body. Someone when you, when you did hit him, he didn't let you just get away with that and continue. He got you right back. Someone even though you had movement, he knew how to cut the ring off. And he implemented a game plan that was better than yours. That's what happened on that particular but hey, you want to blame on her shoulder? It is what it is. But for now, shout out to Tio, handling your business, prove my prediction right. 
like, subscribe, share, I'm out.